Very warm greetings to you as we approach Holy Week and Easter. Greetings from the Southern Counties Baptist Association team. Of course, it seems extraordinary to us that we are not going to be able to celebrate in the way we'd like to for Holy Week and Easter. But still it is that we're going to find ways to enter into uh, this extraordinary account of the love and the sacrifice and the rising of Jesus. It's a story which bizarrely resonates with something that many of us are going to be doing over the next few days. The new freedoms that we're going to enjoy in the next uh, couple of weeks or so includes being able to meet outside. And of course, many people have got ready for that by ordering uh, a gazebo, perhaps dusting off their barbecue. And at any point soon, there's going to be the tantalising aromas of barbecuing food coming across a fence or a wall near you soon. And it resonates with some bits of the Easter story. Food being cooked on charcoal, barbecued fish, the aromas reaching Simon Peter who's dashed in his best crawl across the water towards Jesus as quickly as he can after the overwhelming catch of fish, not least because of the unresolved, unfinished business he's got since he denied Jesus. And when he denied Jesus, of course, there was that burning charcoal smell again because one of the occasions was in the high priest's courtyard where some were warming themselves over a burning fire. But there are other aromas and scents that are associated with the Easter story. There's Mary of Bethany. Mary of Bethany and a meal that Jesus is at, but also Lazarus is at, her brother. And the extraordinary gratitude and love she feels for Jesus. It was there already, but even more so now that her brother has been raised. Although, of course, the aroma of life that's around uh, Lazarus, the reminder of resurrection and its possibility, has another contrasting uh, smell that's in the room, which is the uh, smell of false piety as Mary anoints Jesus with this expensive spike nard perfume and is criticised by Judas and the disciples. There's another uh, uh, aroma there still, which is the aroma of uh, threat and the anxiety that goes with that because it's precisely because of Lazarus being raised that the authorities want to get hold of Jesus to stamp out this movement to bring an end to Jesus's mission. But the strongest scent is the scent of love. This semi-spontaneous act of wanting to show Jesus that he's loved but for Jesus it's more than simply him showing that there's gratitude for what he's done. For Jesus it communicates to him that he's been anointed because spike nard was used for burial. He's been anointed and prepared for what lies ahead, for burial, for the death that he will go to. It's almost as though we're being told Mary is the one person that gets and takes seriously and doesn't try to push away the reality that Jesus has been talking about, that he must suffer and be crucified. She gets it. She takes it so seriously that she communicates at this point of all points her love and her belief in him and her encouragement to him. The fact that she's with him and for him. And Jesus receives it. Jesus is encouraged by it. The scent of this belief and this love that's expressed by Mary will linger on him, linger right through into the next couple of days. Perhaps even on the cross, there will be the a lingering scent of this smell which was so pungent and so powerful mixed with all the other aromas that were around not least the pungent uh, smell of the vinegar as it's raised to Jesus to drink. 
Someone's said in reflecting on this story that in what Mary did, she loved Jesus into his future. She loved Jesus into his future. And there is something really, really vital about that. The other disciples, especially the male ones, will mostly abandon him, desert him. They won't be able to watch and pray with him. But Mary communicates, I get you, I get what you're saying, I'm for you, I love you. I will not abandon you. And there's something extraordinarily powerful about that. She's the one person that Jesus knows, humanly speaking, is communicating she believes in him. That empathic understanding, if you like, it's another example of that phrase, being heard, is so close to being loved that it's hard for most of us to tell the difference. Mary has heard Jesus. She takes seriously what he's saying. She doesn't pretend it's going to be okay and he hasn't got to go through it. But she does reach out to him in love and belief as he goes forward into Jerusalem and suffering and crucifixion. Well, I wonder whether you've experienced someone that actually really gets you and believes in you. Perhaps they've not done something quite as dramatic and sacrificial as Mary did, but uh, in a myriad of ways, through phone calls and visiting you and um, cards and flowers, and perhaps, of course, most commonly nowadays, a text right up to the minute of the difficult thing that we've got to face. They've communicated to you that they take seriously the difficult reality that you're having to engage in. It's very powerful. It means huge amounts. It helps us to go into the future, to know that we're being loved into our future. Perhaps you've had people that have done that over the years. Perhaps over this last year, you've done that for others. And that's been really important to them as well loved into his future and Jesus it really moves me this Jesus is able to receive it and uh, to honour it this love that's expressed towards him I'm not very good at that I'm very very independent um, uh, for whatever reason I don't always find it easy to, re to receive care and love I try to but I'm not always very good at it and um, but Jesus is able to receive it and is loved into his future through it. And so it is that Jesus goes forward into Jerusalem and to his suffering and his crucifixion and his burial and then on the third day is raised from the dead. And then Jesus loves others into their future and this is where we finish. On the shores of the Sea of Galilee. As Simon Peter reaches the beach, as no doubt he has his share of barbecued fish, Jesus takes him aside and enables him to receive the forgiveness and the affirmation of call, feed my sheep, sheep as Peter is encouraged into his future, loved into his future. May it be so for you with your sense of doubt, your sense of inadequacy, your sense of not being all that you might be or should be. And may it be for me as well with my experience of all those things and more. God who comes alongside us directly and invisibly by the Spirit but also through other people, God with flesh on, God with skin on, to love us into our future and into his future. God bless you this Easter time.